We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Seeing is not believing anymore. President Barack Obama never said these lines. You're hearing actor and comedian Jordan Peele's voice imitating Obama, lip synced to an existing video clip. It's a so-called deep fake. You can literally put into a person's mouth, you know, anything you want. Someone apparently wanted to see Nicolas Cage starring in roles he never played, as Indiana Jones and as James Bond. This is me deep faked as Donald Trump. Recently, the technology has gotten more accessible. So I mean, does, does your mom know what you're doing in your spare time? I of course not know. I wouldn't you know, want to tell anybody that I do this or I make these things. This is the deep fake video of me. That's not my body. That's not me. And some of the people developing the deep fake dark arts come from prestigious places. Isn't it people in academia who are advancing this technology? Yeah, well, we are seeing the technology being misused. We know that there's a dark side to it. You put all that together and what you have is not a threat to our elections, but a threat to our republic. We're at UC Berkeley here to see Hani Farid, one of the foremost experts in the world when it comes to computer forensics. Farid has spent the past 20 years of his career identifying doctored images. Now he's trying to find ways to detect deep fakes. If you can change visual images, you can change history. And there's something very powerful still about seeing something in terms of changing people's uh, beliefs. Changing photos and history used to be tedious and technical. In this photo, Stalin had a secret police official removed from photos when he fell out of favor. Hollywood has had the wherewithal for decades to produce computer-generated fakes, like in the movie Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks meeting with John F. Kennedy. <laughs> I believe he said he had to go pee. Now fast forward to where we are today in the last few years, we've seen a whole new generation of fake content. Neural networks, machine learning, artificial intelligence technologies being adapted to synthesize for you fake content. It's that we've democratized access to incredibly powerful software. Almost anyone can do it. Almost anybody can do it, and that's a game changer. Some of these anybodies are into putting people fakely into compromising positions. This technology has been used to put the faces of celebrities like Emma Watson, Gal Gadot, and Angelina Jolie onto female porn actors. We messaged a deepfake porn website. A man who said he set up the site agreed to talk to us via Skype, but only if we disguised his voice. We could not independently verify his identity. How come you don't want to show your face to us? There's a negative stigma with deepfakes. Why are you into deepfakes to begin with? to the Stuck community, I'm actually taking requests of them and making them. But you could imagine that there are people who could be deep faked and are being deep faked in a way that's really hurtful, right? When you're doing this, is there any part of you that puts yourself in the mind of a celebrity who finds out that she's been deep faked? I think that this content, people are gonna make it regardless. It's not only celebrities that are getting deep faked this way, Noelle Martin was an 18-year-old student in Sydney, Australia, when she first became a victim of what she calls morph porn. This is the deep fake video of me performing oral sex on a man that's not me. I don't know who the man is. I don't even want to look because I'm pretty sure there's probably some more. Oh my God. This is a new one. So that says to me that they are still targeting me. Over the past six years, Martin has found dozens of doctored images and videos of herself. She has no idea who's responsible for them. I mean, I just can't explain the level of violation and also shame that I felt because in the beginning, I kind of blamed myself. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Martin went to the police, but they said they couldn't help her at that moment. At the time, there was no law making doctored visuals a criminal offense. And for a long time, she felt so ashamed, 
that she didn't even share what had happened with her parents. I think it was something that was difficult to actually talk to you guys about. If there's an assault or something, you know, we'll know how to deal with it. This is, you don't know who the hell is the perpetrator here. I, I, I think I felt helpless. It frightens me. I tell you, it frightens me. And I know the law, I practice the law here, and I still don't know what the hell to do. In the meantime, the fakes are getting ever more sophisticated. So there's a lot happening very, very quickly right now. Fareed shows us the cutting edge research that's been publicly discussed in the field. The newest iterations of fake videos are not only headshots that are being manipulated, but actually full body manipulation. And one of these fake videos includes me. I'm not a very good dancer. Let's just say I'm no Bruno Mars. Well, actually, I can be. Detector Pose software scans Mars movements and then renders my video to make my limb movements match his. The dance video was synthesized by three Berkeley students and overseen by a computer science professor. So what you do is you basically, you feed into the system a whole bunch of images of the person you want to retarget on the right. You have somebody who is the puppet master on the left and it synthesizes whatever you want. And then I superimpose into that a voice synthesis of President Putin, President Trump, whomever it is. And now you've got some very powerful technology. So who makes this next generation of deep fakes? Isn't it people in academia who are advancing this technology? Yeah, well, yeah, look, I would not criticize my colleagues, but I would urge them to spend more time thinking about the consequences of developing this type of technology, because the fact is, it's not a hypothetical anymore. We are seeing this happening. We are seeing the technology being misused. So do you think there's a plausible scenario under which deep fakes result in war? Honestly, I don't think that's a stretch. So Nuclear we, war being launched? I don't think it's likely, but I don't think it's out of the question. Imagine the following scenario. Video is produced of Donald Trump saying, I've just launched nuclear weapons against North Korea. That video goes onto Twitter and goes viral in 30, 60 seconds. North Korea responds in another 60 seconds before anybody figures out that the video is fake. How are we going to believe anything anymore that we see? And so to me, that's a real threat to our democracy. Another threat are instances where there is only one recording. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the In the future, Fareed thinks that politicians like Donald Trump could just claim that a recording like this one is computer generated. Although the president first apologized for the words he used in this video, over a year later, news reports said that Donald Trump was now describing the recording as not authentic. So what can be done about computer-generated fakes? In Australia, Noelle Martin decided to speak out. Can I get a show of hands who here has ever Googled themselves? Martin also contacted lawmakers and was able to help bring about a law that criminalizes non-consensual deepfakes. I stood with the Attorney General of New South Wales at the press conference when he announced the laws. I think I just got so emotional because while I didn't get the justice that I had been looking for, just him recognizing the harm that I had experienced was very healing. There is no law that criminalizes deepfakes in the United States. But could artificial intelligence help in spotting computer-generated videos? Let's say you had a video that came before you and you're asked, is this real or not? How would you figure it out? Yeah, so this is one technique we have. When your heart is beating, there is blood flowing into and out of your face. And we can use that to detect whether this is, has been manipulated or not. Another idea is to check videos for unusual blinking patterns. As soon as I've told you that now, give it a, what, a couple of hours? Now the new fakes will start having blinking incorporated into that. So there's that tension. It's an arms race. It's an arms race. Recently, the military joined this arms race. Fareed is part of a research program financed by the Pentagon to find new forensic methods to uncover computer-generated fakes. This is the game we're gonna play. We're gonna develop a forensic technique, so there's gonna be a counter-forensic technique. And so the game, and we, we should understand this, is I know I'm gonna lose this game, but what I will do along the way is make it harder and more time consuming and more difficult and take it out of the hands of the average person to create a compelling fake. 